So recently I went out shooting with this lens using the Sony ZV-E1 and there are a few things I love about it. There's a few things I hate about it. It is a little bit heavier than I expected, but it's pretty small for the most part. I mean, it's definitely lighter than an, any other lens that you can get in this category, unless you're looking at the Sigma 100 to 400. And there's some things about this lens that I think just make it really stand out. And the main thing that I love about it is that it goes from 50 to 400 millimeters, okay? A lot of times when you're shooting with a telephoto lens, like you can't shoot anything close up. I was at a soccer game the other day, and I was taking some photos of my son while he was playing, and, and it did a really good job keeping up. It tracked him really well, it was really fast. I even put on the face uh, priority mode, so it was only tracking his face, which is a cool feature with the ZV-E1 and also the A7R5, any of the newer Sony cameras. But when he like, ran out, like close to us, I was able to quickly zoom it into 50 millimeters and get everything in like a, a wider frame of view. And I think that is just a super awesome reason to get this lens. Now, one huge consideration to think about with this lens is the weight. So this lens weighs in at 2.54 pounds. That is 1,153 grams. And just to kind of give you an idea, it's pretty similar in weight to the Sony 100 to 400. That lens is 3.24 pounds. So it's about a half pound heavier than this one. And the thing with that is you might say, well, I'm gonna get the Tamron because it's so much lighter. Well, the Tamron doesn't come with a tripod foot. And that makes a huge difference. If you attach a foot to this lens, it comes in pretty close to what you would get with the Sony 100 to 400. So just to give you a comparison, the Tamron, this weighs 2.5 pounds, right? The Sony without the tripod foot weighs in at three pounds or 1,393 grams. So it's about a half pound difference, which isn't huge. But if you add a tripod foot on this, it's gonna make it significantly heavier. And that's one other complaint I have with this lens is it doesn't come with a tripod foot. So you can't add any color to it. You just, you, you get it like this and you're gonna have to spend like an extra 100 to 150 bucks to get a tripod foot unless you get an aftermarket tripod foot. All right, so let's just talk about features real quick. So this obviously has vibration compensation. It's not the best, but it's also not the worst. Um, you can easily just click right here to turn it off. You can turn it to panning right here or you turn it to just vibration compensation. And if you wanna do those panning shots, it's pretty nice if you're tracking birds or wildlife or cars or planes or whatever, you have that option. Now it also has these custom features right here and there's three of them. Now default is set to um, inside your camera so you can just set these modes from, for custom setting one, two, and three. And you can pretty much set it to any function you want for your camera to do, or you can just set it in that they have like a software program and it's pretty cool. So this has a USB-C port right here and you just plug your USB-C in there and it will do a really good job just like updating the firmware if you need to do that, or you can just set a custom button for uh, this lens. Now here are my custom buttons. I got custom one to do pretty much nothing. Custom two does manual focus and custom three does aperture. It changes the aperture and that's all by just one click of the button. So those are all the features. It also has a lock, but it locks at 50 millimeters, which I don't think I'll ever use um, a lock at 50 millimeters. I don't see why you would need to. Um, maybe I just don't really understand why, but uh, I don't really care for the lock. Another thing about this lens is just like most Tamron, len Tamron lenses, it when you zoom, so normally you zoom from here, but this is where it focuses. You zoom from here, and that just kind of bothers me a little bit. I know it makes their lenses a little bit lighter, and that's why Tamron does that, but I just, it's just a little bit annoying. And then another thing about the zoom is you have to zoom quite a bit to get it all the way out. So 
you can just watch my hand a little bit turning all the way to there and all the way back. I mean, it's not that bad. It's just a little bit shorter. If you use like the Sony 100 to 400, you're just gonna be twisting a little bit um, further than I would prefer, but you're also going from 50 millimeters to 400 millimeters. So that is just something you need to consider. So anyway, those are the main features with this lens. Let's get into the pros and cons. So first off, pros is just gonna be focal length. Going from 50 to 400 is incredible. Um, the size and weight I think is a pro and con because this lens is one of the smaller 100 to 400 lenses you can get. Um, I know it's a 50 to 400, but the Sigma is, is pretty much the same in comparison. I would say the Sigma is a little bit thinner and like this is a little bit chunkier, but the Sigma is also like slightly heavier, which is odd because it, it's a 100 to 400. So the zoom range isn't as great. This lens is also incredibly sharp. So I was taking some photos of some pelicans and some birds in uh, the beach that I lived near, and it was just getting some really nice, crisp photos of those birds. I didn't really have any complaints here. Um, also, the autofocus is really fast and accurate. Um, I think it's a great lens for autofocus. And then another pro is just like, the compatibility and if you need to upgrade firmware, you don't have to buy like a separate device. You can just plug in the USB, you're good to go. Now, what are the cons? As I mentioned earlier, the weight is a con because it is pretty similar to the Sony 100 to 400 if you add a tripod collar. I know it's a half pound lighter, but still it's just annoying that like, a tripod collar is really gonna add some weight if you decide to go that route. And you could just get the Sony 100 to 400, take the collar off, and it's it's almost the same weight, um, give or take a half pound. The other con is there's no tripod foot with this camera, and then also the vibration reduction is not the best that I've seen in these kind of lenses. So that's just something to keep in mind. So the main reason I would say to get this lens is because it is a little bit lighter, it is a little bit smaller, it's not as, as tall and chunky as that Sony 100 to 400. And then also it just has a really cool focal length. And I was, I was considering getting a smaller lens, but to be able to go from 50 millimeters to 400, I think is kind of a big deal, especially if you do like landscape photography. I tend to shoot from around 70 to 300 millimeters when I do landscapes. And to be able to go from 50 to 400 is just really cool. And that's why I think this is such a great lens. Now, one other consideration to think about here is there aren't a lot of lenses in this range. The most similar lens to this is the Sigma 100 to 400, because, like, in size and weight, it's really similar, but the 100-400 isn't as sharp and it doesn't have as good of autofocus. You can also get the 200-600, but that's like a beast. It's a really heavy lens. It weighs 4.6 pounds. This is 2.5, okay? Now your other option, which I think this is something you might consider, is the Sony 70-200 to Series 2. This is the GM lens. This lens with a teleconverter, you, you pretty much get a 70 to 400, which is pretty comparable to this. So use the 70 to 200 with a 2X teleconverter, and that comes in at 2.7 pounds. This is 2.5 pounds, 2.7, you're pretty much at the same weight, plus you have a 70 to 200, 2.8 if you need it, and then you add on that teleconverter and it pretty much becomes a little bit better. You know, you're gonna have a better uh, maximum aperture than you would with this lens because it, it becomes a 5.6 at 400 millimeters, whereas this at 400 millimeters is a 6.3. And then I think the last lens to consider is an APS-C lens. And if you just want a longer lens, but you don't want all the weight, I would highly recommend getting a, the Sony 70 to 350 because on an APS-C body, that's pretty much a 100 to 500. And so it's gonna get a longer telephoto length than you would get with this. And it's significantly lighter than any of the other Sony lenses in this range. So let me just give you a comparison. As we mentioned earlier, the Tamron 50 to 400, two and a half pounds, right? The Sony 100 to 400, pretty much three pounds. The Sony 70 to 350 is 1.3 pounds, 1.3. 
that's less than half the weight than the Sony 100 to 400. And so that's why I think it's such a compelling lens to get and why I think I actually may get that lens. Now the problem is it's also, um, it maxes out its uh, aperture of 6.3 just like this one and uh if you're and you're not going to be able to shoot full frame on it which is another reason why you may not want to consider it but for everything else if you're just doing landscapes if you're using an APS-C camera body i think it's a really good lens to use especially if you're using like the sony a7r5 you don't want a heavy setup and you still you get full frame and you also get that at 26 megapixels in crop mode so i think it would be like really good for a camera like that or even if you had any type of uh, APS-C camera like the a6700. So do I regret buying the Sony 50-400? to I, I really like the lens mainly for the weight and the focal length. That's the main reason I'm going to keep it. But in the back of my head, I'm still thinking, how can I make this lighter? And in my mind, that is the Sony 70 to 350 APS-C lens. And I still don't have an APS-C camera, but I'm really considering it because I think that would just make my setup so much lighter. And when it comes to photography, that's one thing I'm obsessed with is just having the lightest gear. That's why I shoot with mirrorless cameras. And that's why I have just a, a lot of lightweight lenses. So anyway, I hope you found this uh, video helpful and please leave your comments below if you have any thoughts or comments on anything we've talked about today. And I will see you in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.